How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the Nat Automotive channel and in today's video I'm finally going to be re-welding the front frame rails and impact bar on my C5 Corvette. So my most recent video on the channel was a video of me dialing in the settings on my titanium welder from Harbor Freight. It was the Flux 125 welder and I was getting the settings squared away and getting some more practice on a piece of the old front impact bar I actually cut off the car a little over two years ago. Um, now quick backstory: when I got this car in November 2018, the plan was just to turn this thing into a vet cart. So essentially rip the whole thing down, cut the frame rail and front end short so it looks uh, better. Um, but since then I've changed the build plan and it's going to stay a C5 Corvette and it's just going to be a really cool autocross build. Um, so I'm obviously not going to be cutting the frame rail short so I want to go back in and weld the front impact bar 100% because I just did a quick uh, weld that wasn't really that great with my old welder that didn't perform that well. And now that I have a better welder and I'm, I've gotten some more practice I want to go on and weld these things up 100% on the front end of the car. While the welding muscle memory is fresh in my mind because I literally just finished filming the previous video actually, I want to go ahead and start welding the car so I can check this off the list. So um, some of the clips that you're about to see are from like the previous weekend because I was doing some things out of order. So if you see me wearing different clothes or it looks different, that's just because some of these clips were from previously. So I want to make sure I got everything in the video. Um, but the name of the game is welding the front end of the car in. So but before that, I have to kind of prep the front end of the car to be welded because there are some things in the way. Okay, so first order of business for getting these uh, joints ready to be welded uh, again is uh, doing some prep. So I'm going to grind down some of these old welds and also prep uh, with some sandpaper. I don't have any flap discs right now, so I'll have to go get some flap discs, but just want to prep the area so that I can get ready to weld this thing 100%. Okay, so I got most of the old welds ground down. Um, not 100% off, just because it takes so much. And uh, the other reason being that in the GM repair manual, which I'll show you guys, it says to make sure to not, uh, you know, I'm using a grinding wheel, because if I started trying to do this with a flap disc, it'd take a million years and a million grinding wheel, or a million flap wheels. And they say not to use a, a grinding disc because you obviously don't want to eat into the material of the frame and compromise its strength. So I'm being really meticulous and careful to only grind away the welds and sometimes it gets difficult. And uh, so I didn't want to go too far um, uh, trying to get the welds off and then eat into the frame. Uh, but the next thing and I think I'm going to have to do actually is uh, I'm going to have to remove the radiator support bracket. Um, so it's the bracket that you see there on the bottom that holds the radiator and AC condenser in. Um, reason being is the part where it mounts to in the front, right here, is very close to the joint where the impact bar meets the frame rail. So uh, in order to clean that spot up and obviously weld it, uh, I'm going to have to take this off. And uh, I was going to take this off anyways to kind of repair it and straighten it out because in the accident, this arm right here, I don't know how well it comes across on camera, is a little bit crooked this way. So I'm going to use like a hydraulic jack and some wood and straighten it out maybe with some heat as well. So I was going to take that off anyways, uh, might even throw a fresh coat of paint on it. Um, and uh, a common point on the Corvette on the bottom is this piece here always hits uh, like curbs and driveways so might uh, fix that up on the bottom a little bit as well. So the thing is is I don't want to have to take the radiator out like 100% so I'm thinking of building some kind of like wooden structure to go up and over so that I can use a ratchet strap and uh, hook the radiator and AC condenser and hang it from that in the meantime while I take the support out from the bottom so I don't have to go through the process of removing all the lines and draining the coolant because I still need to be able to start up the car and move it around a little bit. Um, so 
I think that's going to be the best thing to do in the meantime. So I'm going to look at getting some wood down and uh, cutting up a few pieces uh, to make this kind of like uh, bracket that goes over the top to hold the radiator and AC condenser so I can take out the bottom piece. Okay, so I got this little wooden structure here put together to help support the radiator and AC condenser when I take off this lower bracket here. Uh, so just quickly, really threw it together. Um, sits behind the first bolt for the hood bracket and then um, it kind of presses up against the inner fender here so it's a nice solid fit. So the next step here is I'm basically going to take some two ratchet straps on either side here and uh, loop it under the radiator and over top of this guy and uh, get it nice and taut and then that should allow me to uh, then take the radiator support bracket out um, and then I can start kind of prepping the uh, areas to weld underneath as well. this doesn't say Frankenstein, I don't know what does, but hey, I think it's going to be functional and it's going to do just what I need it to do. So I got the ratchet straps on there. I made sure I fed it down through an area where it's not pinching on anything um, and it goes around the sway bar. So that's going to be the main uh, point where it grabs on the back side. Um, same thing on this side. There's the um, ABS module right here. So I want to make sure I didn't loop around that. And uh, also the the uh, ratchet straps are out of the way of the fan blades. Even though I won't be uh, driving the car, just simply moving it back and forth in the garage here. If the fans do kick on, uh, the belt or the uh, straps are definitely not in the way of the fans. So I ratcheted up just a little bit, so um, it's actually more so on this side. It's sitting out of the little seat on the bottom of the the uh, support bracket here, um, and on that side, it's it's also ra uh, raised up just a little bit. So theoretically, when I take the four bolts out for this thing, the radiator and AC condenser should not go anywhere. So we'll see how this goes. So now that I've created that wooden uh, support for the radiator and AC condenser and I've removed the lower radiator support and I've cleaned up the welds on the front end of the car, it is now ready to weld everything 100%. So I'm going to go ahead and get the car backed out, reposition it and get all situated so that I can weld up the front end. So one thing I do want to note, um, in my previous video I was using the Vulcan 030 welding wire from Harbor Freight, but for this, uh, these welds here I bought this uh, Lincoln Electric 030 from uh, Home Depot. I've just heard um, as I was reading forums online that people like the weld results from this stuff better. I don't know, it probably won't make a difference for my skill level, but uh, you know, I just thought I'd try it, plus I need more welding wire anyways. So the other thing too, um, you know, I didn't really find a clear answer on this online, but I am going to disconnect the battery for the car before I weld with the frame rail since I'm going to have to be grounding to the frame rail, so I don't want to take any chances with frying any electronics. Uh, maybe someone who welds for a living with an, uh, like an auto body or frame shop can can comment on you know if that is necessary, um, but I'm just doing it as a precaution. Yeah, I've never understood why GM chooses to do these front mount terminals on these batteries. Why can't they just make it like every other car brand and have them on the top?
So I'm just gonna give the welds one quick little clean down real quick before I go for it, and then we'll get started. I'm also gonna grind off some uh, paint here for my grounding clamp. So I'm going to apply a little bit of nozzle gel just to a few of the areas next to the weld that I try to want to avoid getting spatter on. There we go. Alright, so I got the first weld all set up. Not too bad, might hit it with a second pass. Got the top weld on the driver's side here, pretty nicely done up. And then the next part I'm working on, I just started the bottom, is this interior weld. And let me see if I can get the light in the proper position there. So you can see I got a little bit of a gap I need to fill, so that's going to be some interesting work with doing tacks. But man, the, the trickiest thing with welding, honestly, is more, or one of the trickiest things, is getting in a position and being comfortable and uh, having a steady hand while you're in that awkward position. Alrighty everyone, so after much work, the welding is finished. I ran into a little bit of issue with the welder in regards to the welding wire uh, getting tangled for some reason, I don't know why, so it took me a lot of time to try and figure that out. As you can see, it's dark now, so <laughs> I've been working on this for a long time today. But overall, I'm really happy with how the welds turned out, um, given the fact that I'm still somewhat intermediate slash beginner on welding, and I've just got a basic entry-level flux core wire welder. Um, I was pretty happy with how the welds, A, look, and B, um, from the appearance, how well they penetrated the metal. I mean, it's pretty thin stuff. Like I said, it's 16 gauge, so it's not gonna take a lot to get a, a deep penetrated weld on this, but this is definitely gonna be strong, and when I pulled the original impact bar off of the car, um, when I did the first repair, these welds look very comparable to how the ones from the Union Auto Workers on the assembly line who built this car, how those welds look. So overall, I'm pretty happy. So I'll just show you guys real quick. So I did the welds and then I went through with the flap disc on the grinder real quick just to get some of the rough edges off. And then I also went with the wire brush on my drill to kind of smooth down the surface and get any little bits of spatter off as well. So you can see here's the one weld in the corner there. I did have to get these ones on the top ground down a little bit more because there's a bracket that sits up here, so I need to make sure that that fits uh, properly on the top. Got the other, let's see, get the light in the right spot. Weld there, the weld down in that corner, weld down in that corner, 
and then this one's hard to see because the headlight is in the way but uh and then the other thing too oh my goodness the part that was hard was welding the bottom upside down uh, that was very difficult um, i have a majorly kinked neck so i'm going to need a good massage after this but if you're a professional welder and you're welding upside down frequently props to you because that is very difficult um, so that was tough um, but i was able to get it done and pretty happy with how those welds turned out let's see if i can show you guys down there so there is a piece of the old uh, frame rail there's like a lip that comes off when they originally put these things on so that's what that little extra um, material you see there is and the weld is just behind that and then the one over here as well so overall I'm pretty stoked to get this done this is a big step and I was kind of dreading it just because it's a lot of work um, and it's a very dirty messy job so Metal fabrication is fun, but it's very messy and can be quite time consuming. So I think the last thing I'm gonna do before I wrap up is I got a few a little extra cans of uh, primer in the uh, cupboard. I'm just gonna throw some uh, just rough real quick primer on the car to protect the bare metal. Um, I mean, the car sits in the garage here, so it's not like it's sitting out in the rain, like it's raining right now, but um, I just wanna protect this metal from any bit of oxidation or rusting of any kind. So I found this old can of filler primer I'm just gonna use to hit the bare metal spots um, to keep those protected in the meantime um, before I, in the long run, as the end product for this uh, front end, cover everything in the matte black factory paint. Alrighty everyone, that's gonna do it for this video. It was a long day of welding on the Corvette here and I need to clean up the garage, it is very dirty, and then I need to get myself cleaned up because I am also very dirty as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you haven't already, already, definitely subscribe for more content to come because uh, we are in the thick of this Corvette build. So it's a lot of fun and a lot of cool videos and content to come, plus the first fun mod for the Corvette has come in. So we'll be unboxing that in a future video here really soon. So thanks again guys for watching and other than that, I will see you in the next one.